The first human trials in Europe of a coronavirus vaccine has begun in Oxford in what is a highly significant moment. This afternoon, two volunteers, both scientists, were injected. They're the first of more than 800 adults aged between 18 and 55 who've been recruited for the study. Half the group will receive the COVID-19 vaccine and half will get a control vaccine which protects against meningitis. The results won't be known for months. Already more than 186,000 people have died because of coronavirus worldwide. In the last 24 hours, 616 more deaths were recorded in hospitals across the UK. It brings the official UK death toll to 18,738, but that does not include deaths in care homes or in the community in England and Northern Ireland. Here's our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh. This could change everything. A vaccine against coronavirus. A way out for all of us. OK, so I need a scratch. The first volunteer to receive it was Elisa Granato, a microbiologist. She's 32 today. I'm a scientist, so of course I want to try and support science, um, the scientific process, whenever I can. And uh, since I don't study viruses, I felt a bit useless these days, so <laughs> I felt like this is a very easy way for me to support the cause. Yeah, that's why I'm here and I'm excited. Half those on the trial will get the coronavirus vaccine, half a different jab. The volunteers don't know which one they've received. I'm just basically going to sit here and incubate this thing and hopefully <laughs> provide some good, some good follow-up data and then we'll see and hopefully it works. What would normally take years has been done in three months by scientists at Oxford University. Around 80 groups worldwide are developing coronavirus vaccines. A few others in the US and China have also started human trials. There's no guarantee any of them will succeed. Personally, I am very optimistic it's going to work formally. We are testing it in an in a efficacy study. There's absolutely no suggestion we're going to start using this vaccine in a wider population before we've demonstrated that it actually works and stops getting people infected with coronavirus. So how does the vaccine work? Scientists have taken the genes for the spike protein on the surface of coronavirus and put them into a harmless virus. This forms the vaccine. After it's injected, the vaccine enters cells which start to produce the coronavirus spike protein. This prompts the immune system to produce antibodies and activate killer T cells, which should recognize the coronavirus in future and destroy it, preventing infection. The scientists will only know how effective the vaccine is if lots of volunteers are exposed to coronavirus. Well, at this moment, we're chasing the end of this current epidemic wave. And of course, if we don't catch that, we won't be able to tell whether the vaccine works uh, in the next few months. But we do expect that there will be more cases in the future because this virus hasn't gone away. Why not? simply infect people with coronavirus after they've had the vaccine, then you'd know. At this moment, it would be very difficult to do that with a, a disease which potentially has quite a high fatality. So I think if we reached a point where we had some treatments for the disease and we could guarantee the safety of volunteers, that would be a very good way of testing a vaccine. The vaccine is stored in this freezer at minus 80 degrees. Rarely has a medical trial had so much riding on it for so many people. It is hard to overstate just how important this vaccine could be if, and it's a big if, it proves to be safe and effective. It would represent science giving us the solution to the coronavirus pandemic. Well, I think everybody agrees it's the only way we're going to get out of the um, lockdown, the social distancing, uh, and really be able to still have people protected as they go about their daily lives. Edward, a cancer researcher, was next up. There is a theoretical risk. The vaccine could make a coronavirus infection worse, but the team here think that highly unlikely, and the volunteers will be carefully monitored. Um, it seems like the right thing to do to uh, ensure that we can uh, you know, combat this disease and get over it a lot faster. Do you have any concerns at all about safety? I think you can never fully 
um, exclude any sort of potential risk. But I think you have to, I guess, walk in faith in these things. You have to uh, trust in uh, what they, um, that the work has been done as best they can um, and know that the cause is uh, important. The Oxford team are hoping to have a million doses of vaccine ready by September, with a huge scale-up in manufacturing after that. It's not clear, though, who would be prioritised to get the vaccine first. And for now, we have to wait and see if it works. And Fergus is with me now. Extraordinary how quickly they have turned this all around. But your assessment of how successful it could be? Well, we've got to be careful not to overpromise just because we're desperate for this vaccine to work. But the team in Oxford have a really strong record going back 30 years and they have developed a successful prototype vaccine against another type of coronavirus, MERS, which has done well in clinical trials. They've also developed vaccines against plague, malaria. Now, if they don't get early quick results in the UK, they're considering a trial in Kenya where the epidemic of coronavirus may well be on the rise. Now, this virus is known, this vaccine is known to produce um, a strong antibody response, but that doesn't necessarily equate to protection. And we're going to need many vaccines. There are dozens in development. So then we'll need billions of doses and expect a huge debate over which countries and which groups of people get the vaccine first. Fergus Walsh, thank you. From tomorrow, up to 10 million key workers and their families will be eligible for a coronavirus test if they develop symptoms. The Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, announced that they would be able to book a test online. More testing centres are being opened and the army will be helping with mobile testing facilities across the country. Here's our health editor, Hugh Pym. Home testing for coronavirus. Kits are sent out, people take their own swabs and send them back to be tested. It's part of a new plan for England, along with the expansion of drive-through centres available for essential workers and then mobile testing facilities going to workplaces. We are also currently working with the Army on a new pop-up mobile testing option which was uh, developed for us by the Army and is really working very well. So we have, we're going to have 48 of these pop-up facilities which can travel around the country to where they're needed most, for example in care homes. Key workers and their families with symptoms will also be able to book tests online but a government target for testing still looks challenging. The number of tests on hospital patients and key workers has not moved up much in the last couple of weeks. It's now about 23,000 a day. But ministers have set a target of 100,000 by the end of this month, just a week away. Three so-called mega labs, staffed partly by volunteers, have been set up to handle the big expansion in virus testing, including this one in Glasgow, which opened this week. It hopes soon to be doing thousands of tests each day. At the moment, there are a large number of manual processes that we're doing. Um, we're going to bring in automation and further um, scale up our capacity to meet what will be inevitably significant demand. But a survey of one group of doctors found that nearly 40% of respondents said they were struggling to get access to testing. We want to be able to go to work uh, and if we have symptoms and we cannot access a test then we, we're required to stay at home. We're, we're also you know, we're nervous of infecting others, uh, particularly uh, family and, and loved ones. An expanded list of workers and their families, including those in supermarkets and transport, will be able to book from tomorrow, potentially up to 10 million people. The challenge will be to ensure that the technology delivers, that those eligible can book a test easily, get it done, then get the lab result back reasonably quickly. And that leaves the question, Will the government hit its target of 100,000 tests daily in a week's time? Hugh Pym, BBC News.